الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا نذير له ولا مثال له ونشهد ان سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وقال تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا نحن نزلنا الذكر وانه لحافظ وان انس رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من جمع القران متعه الله بعقله حتى يموت او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام صدق الله صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين respected ulama ikram brothers mothers sisters and young ones today is a joyous occasion many of you have traveled from far definitely you haven't come for a plate of food or you came to meet the family but your love for this quran and to witness the manifestation and the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has been transferred today into this delicate and young heart of 12 years old with this unique quran its masterpiece the style literacy not only that the message the meaning and the words which caused a revolution over 23 years individuals communities governments were shaken by one word in the cave of hira when darkness when oppression it was called fatrat the time when everyone anticipating that some light will come into the world iqra read That's why if anyone tells the Muslims are backwards, they haven't studied the Quran. Muslims, they're backwards, etc. They're downtrodden, etc. Because the first word, remove every type of darkness, remove oppression, rights of the woman, rights of animals. This one word, Iqra. If you got knowledge. ignorance and darkness evaporates dispels removes every type of ignorance and darkness the 
الحديث of نبي كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما verily Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he wants to raise a nation he wants to raise a person's position he wants to give you honor and respect when Allah wants to give you that he sees and he looks towards your heart what respect and what honor you got for his Quran and when you want to destroy a nation when that nation and that individual turns his back to the Quran then Allah Ta'ala destroys that person it's a very interesting incident there was one Jewish person he was living on the outskirts of Medina to Munawwara now he was going to sell his merchandise in Syria they took the many days of journey he enters Syria he sells his merchandise his goods he barters he buys and on his return now while he's coming back at that marketplace in Syria he sees that there's, there's a youngster a slave being sold but no one glanced at that slave no that slave was very thin not of good appearance short and this when when you looked at that slave you, you, you never want to look the second time so everyone passed 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 you were the last slave standing there and the master that was selling him this he's asked he said whatever price few cents to take him away he's only eating and he's worth nothing the slave so he said right no problem this man <coughs> His name is Zubair. He goes, buys the slave, comes to Medina. He says, no mind. He sells all his goods in the marketplace. I puts that slave there. No one interested in that slave. Not even look at a glance. Just look at his appearance. What do you say? Don't judge a book by its cover. So look at his appearance only. Say, no one should look at him second time too. Master sells all the goods everything the slave standing standing but say keep on standing there in this marketplace until someone buys you he goes away leaves in there three days the slave is standing standing stand. hungry people throwing scraps of food at him third day now in the heat of Medina Munawar the, the night standing no one is to buy him then on the third day a lady by the name of Thubaita she comes past and she looks at him and at that time Allah puts that raham that mercy in her heart and she looks at this she says ask him he says three days I haven't eaten standing in the sun master you know Jews how hard they are and when you're a slave you normally some people you work for people you know what zulam sometimes they make on you Allah put that little raham in a heart. He buys him. What's the price? Whatever you want to pay, take him away. Only a burden on me. Takes him. Keeps him in the house as a slave. Youngster. Now another caravan leaves from Makkah to Mukarrama. Goes to do buying in Syria. On the return, they come past Medina to Munawwara. And the person named Abu Huzaifa. He enters Medina, he does his bartering. And coincidentally, this lady Thubaita and Huzaifa, they click. And this Huzaifa puts a proposal to this lady Thubaita. I'd like to marry you. Then they say, no, he's from Makkah al Mukarrama, he's from the honorable clans, he's a good person. Immediately they accepted the proposal. And she marries him. He stays in Madun al Munawwara. Now he has to go back to Makkah al Mukarrama. So the Thubaita, she got a slave. His name is Salim. She takes the slave herself. They go to Makkah al Mukarrama. When they enter Makkah, they stay a few days there. The buzz 
of Nubuwat and Islam is buzzing around Makkah al Mukarram and everything is tense there. Islam was being spread secretly. So the Huzaifa goes to meet his good friend, Hazrat Osman. And when he goes to see Hazrat Osman, and as he's talking, the best of friends went to Syria, they were best of friends. He comes back from Syria, he's talking to Hazrat Osman, but he sees there's a barrier between him and Hazrat Osman. That there's something that's not clicking. So he asks his friend, Huzaifa asks his friend, Osman, what's the reason that I see and I perceive that there's a barrier between us? Let me be frank with you, my friend, childhood friend, we grew up together, but I have become a Muslim and you are kafir. That's the barrier. We, I cannot cross now over this. If you still want to remain my close friend, become a Muslim. Immediately, Huzaifa. That's why when you have friends, through thick and thin, that's how you know a friend in need is a friend indeed. Immediately, say, I grew up with you, Osman. Childhood friends, middle age friends, and now we still immediately accepted Islam. Osman is happy. He says, Now your wife, through Beta, immediately she accepts Islam. And now that slave Salim. He says, he to I accept Islam. They go by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very happy. And he tells you the hadith, says that whoever frees a slave for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him jannat. Immediately that Thubaita, it was a slave, I freed him, ya Rasulullah. Salim begins to cry. He says, now I'm a free person. Where must I go? I was captured. Honorable family from Iran, I've come, captured, then brought a slave. I only know slavery, and now I'm free. Where must I say no? Huzaifa says, I adopt you as my son. That's why he was no Salim Mola Abu Huzaifa, the freed slave of Abu Huzaifa. From a slave, no one looked at him, his appearance, no one looked at. And what happens after that? He accepts Islam and immediately what he says that I will go now. I free myself for the Quran. I am going to Rasulullah every day to learn this Quran. And he goes and he learns the Quran. And he, the first hijrah to be made from there to Medina, from Makkah to Mukarramah to Medina to Munawwara. He's amongst that group of Muhajireen. And when they reach outside Quba, and they're looking for an imam amongst them, Umar ibn al-Khattab. All the great, great sahabas are there. And who leads them in that namaz? That same slave. No one looked at him. The just of justice of Hazrat Umar, etc. And who's the imam at that time? Salim. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Ashadda nasa lillahi hubba, that the most severest, who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Salim. So, inna Allah yarfaw aqwaman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a slave, from being right at the bottom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his status that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the hadith that if you need to learn Qirat and Quran, that amongst the great four sahabis, Amongst the first one is Salim Mawla Abu Huzaifa. So this is the school of Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises someone and he destroys someone. That's why you know normally I remember in India, there'll be Nawab Sahabs and there'll be millionaires and billionaires on Bichar or Imam Sahab. No one will, Tarawi time, etc. No one will wake up. They'll wait for Imam Sahib Mawlana, he comes to read that now. Everyone is tabi and behind it. That's the honor the Quran gives you. So today, we witness two miracles which the Quran has prophesied about itself. 
many prophecies. The Quran is full of prophecies and miracles. But the Quran has prophesied two miracles, many miracles, but about itself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. That this Quran, Allah says, I descended it. It is my Quran. Tabarrak bil Quran. Fa innau kharaja minhu. That if you're looking for barakat, you are looking for prosperity. You are looking for every tibyan al your solution to every problem. It is the Quran. Today, we have forsaken this Quran. Yeah, we got here as tabarruk, yeah. Make our students hafiz, that's all. The same Quran now, if you get a letter, if I get a letter in, from, uh, from a person in Germany or France or from China, and that my beloved, a lover to my heart, could be a wife to your lover to your heart, and you receive that letter, but you don't know French, you don't know Germany, German language, Chinese language, immediately you'll take that letter and you'll run to the teacher. Anyone knows French, Chinese, read that and explain to me every word. Every word explain to me. What's the meaning behind it? What's the translation? In what categories is mentioned? Because bringing love to your heart. Your beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent this Quran to us. And today, if we do self-cognizance, <coughs> look towards our heart. How much have we given time to this Quran? Because the same Quran, for us we know, you make zina is haram, eat incest is haram, look at na mahram is haram. We know all the haram things. Greater than all these greatest sins is this Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has come upon you and you had made the greatest of injustice and oppressed yourself that did you not look at the meanings of this Quran. How can you call this my beloved Allah ta'ala? How can you say I got for Allah love and his Rasul? This Quran from your beloved it has come. If an ordinary letter comes to you, you give your heart to that letter. This is from my beloved and our beloved. Allah and his Rasul given us this Quran. How many of us have spent little time going to the meanings, going to the translation and seeing what is the effect and what is the means of the Quran? Have we done that? So haven't we done injustice to this Quran? Leave alone the Kuffar, Yahud, Nasara, etc. They want to destroy the Quran, etc. Worse than them is the same Musliman that's taken the Quran and he made the most injustice upon it. Doesn't know the meaning of the Quran? What's the use? You claim you love Allah, but what your actions is separate and your words are separate. My words, I love Allah. My actions, I don't look at the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I protect this Quran. And how he protects it, he transfers it into the heart of Jibreel and from the heart of Jibreel into the heart of Rasulullah into the heart of Abu Bakr Umar, Uthman, Ali, Muawiyah into the Buzugani Imam Abu Hanifa, Shafi, Malik into the Buzugani Din's heart and into the Ustad's heart and from the Ustad our Hafiz Salim into the heart of Hafiz Umar how Allah protected this Quran carry on from above the seven heavens witness and the second, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا You know, there was an a incident mentioned that uh, there was a German Christian group. They took all the Greek Bibles. Because Greek is a closer to Latin. They took all the Greek Bibles and they want to see what is the contradiction, objections, and the discrepancies in all the Bibles. They took, gathered all. And when they studied it, this group of cardinals and priests, professors, etc., from the Christian sect, they found 200,000 contradictory statements in those Bibles. 200,000. 
and they took 42,000 Qur'ans over three decades. They studied that Qur'an, 42,000, not 40, not 42, 42,000. And they studied that, and they looked for over three decades, they can find a flaw, they can find a mistake beside the typographical, you know, wow, one wow, or one zabar, or zer, due to the printing, they found not one objection or one contradicting statement in the Quran. And why must it not be? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's I reveal this Quran, I will protect it. That someone sent me the other day, he says, you know, you get on this, uh, what is chat, GP or something like that, AI intelligence computer, they put the Quran in there. That Quran, the data, is millions and millions of data in that thing. And when they put the Quran in, they say that we cannot replicate this Quran. Isn't that hope for us? That we've got this living miracle in front of us. This Quran, artificial intelligence, can get anything in the world. But when it came to the Quran, cannot come near the Quran. We cannot duplicate, not one ayat of the Qur'an. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْ The second prophecy وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ That we made it easy to learn this Qur'an. That is from five years, from two years, from three years. It doesn't have to be a matured person. It's a sickly person. You see now, you go to Johannesburg, there's one youngster there, he's about five, six years old. His name is Afan Patel. He's a Down syndrome child. He's blind, partially blind. They carry him and they put him on there. And they got all the huffas sitting around him, sheikhs. And they ask this child, he's blind, Down syndrome, never went to madrasa, doesn't know how to read the Quran. And they ask him, the Hafiz will read, the Qari will read. He immediately will say, this ayat from this Surah from this para. Isn't that a miracle? That if you saying healthy, not learn the Quran, Allah will give it to an, a person who's sick. You know, normally you want to go visit the landmarks and land sites and when you go see all the big, big buildings of Joburg and Durban, the beach, etc. Go and visit this child, kiss his hands, kiss his forehead. He got that miracle in his heart. That is what we must go and see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I made Arabic is not our language. English is our language. But look at these youngsters all year. How they learn this Arabic. That's the prophecy of the Quran. 1400 years ago. That I will make sure. I'll protect this Quran with these youngsters. And this Arabic will be so easy on their tongue. They will memorize it. You know the Jewish book. The Torah. That is the Hebrew. Few people know that. The Psalms of Dawood alayhi salam, the Injil of Isa alayhi salam, Aramic language, how many know Aramic, how many know Latin, no one. Few people, but look at this, every house, you have a half a, someone can read the Quran. Isn't that a miracle? That is why the Wifaqul Madaris, 30 years, the existence in Pakistan, they have produced in this 30 years over 1 million hufas. That's only that one madrasa. So Allah again, has prophesied, I will look after the Quran, I will make it easy for you. But are there any, any takers for it? So one person went to a great buzug, Mullah Yaqub Saab, said, Hazrat, I'm 80 years old. The fazilat and the barakat of the Quran is great. But I know I won't be included among the huffaz. Give me one easy solution that I can be included among the huffaz. Say, all right, your memory now is weak. You're getting old now. One leg in the grave, other on a banana peel. You know, you balance it. So now, it's an easy solution. Let's make intention. That from inshallah, from today, till I pass away, I want to start learning the Quran. He says, that you just make, learn one word. Qul huwa Allah, ahad. Qul today, huwa Allah, tomorrow, ahad, third day. Learn that. If you die, Allah will appoint the malaika. An angel in your qabr to teach you the Quran. You will be gathered amongst the Hufaz. Shall all make intention that we're not half in, shall we? Allah will raise us amongst the Hufaz. So, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these prophecies, and you know, the virtues, the fazail, the barakah of the Quran, the hadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man qara'a al-Qur'ana fastazharahu wa ahalla halalahu wa harrama haramahu adakhalahu Allahu al-Jannah that you know a person who memorizes the Quran and what is halal is halal, what is haram is haram, he doesn't mix it. Allah will enter that hufaz, Allah will enter him into Jannah. But before he goes into Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him 10 passports. 10 passports, you know, now you travel, you must have your passport and you can't go anywhere, can't leave the boundaries of South Africa. Allah gives him 10 passports. Allah, for what those ten passot? For he will intercede for ten people. Qad wajabat lahun nar. That the fire is compulsory upon him. Allah will, on those ten people of his family. Allah will tell him, you take these ten people. Because of the barakah of this Quran, there's a ten passport. Eleven, yourself, and ten of your family members, they go into Jannah. So, you know, fortunate our Hafiz Zahir is, well, he's plus three sons, 40. So, you know, normally you need to hold the kurtas of the hufaz. That may, may be some action of ours not accepted by Allah Ta'ala. Hold the Hafiz kurta. Inshallah, he'll, you'll be included among those 10 people. But wajabat, wajib, compulsory on him, Jahannam. Also, barakah of the Quran. Why cannot be? Allah's kalam is in you. Allah has made the earth haram to eat your body. Now, hadith of Nabi, that is for the immediate family and for the hafiz. Then, what is there for the parents? Man jama'al Quran wa amila bima fi. He learned the Quran and he never forgot the Quran. He made amal. He practiced upon the Quran. On the Quran, Ulbi Sawali Dahu Tajam Tajan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him such a crown. Dawu Ahsana Kama Dawu Ishams. That the glaring brightness of this crown, it outshines the sun. The sun today is 93 million miles away. It takes eight minutes for that sun to come to you. 93 million miles away. And Allah will give you that for the parents, that crown that outshines that sun 93 million years away. But you need to make amal on that. That the parents, because parents sacrifice. You know, it's not easy. We know we got children too. When you get your child, then what happens? He must leave the comfort of his bed, the comfort, delicious food of his mother, the pampering of the father, and he sent him to madrasa. Now half his ummah, I know now he's left Standerton, came. Parents love their children, but sacrifice for that Quran. After your sacrifice, why won't Allah reward you? And you come in a madrasa and the shouting of the ustad and the nagging of the ustad and the hitting of the ustad and the child takes it and he takes and father doesn't complain one word Allah rewards him with that crown that everyone on the day of Qiyam will look at that crown and the hadith of Hazrat Ali Ya Ali ta'allam al-nas ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allimu al-nas Rasulullah s.a.w. told Hazrat Ali oh Ali learn the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an to the people this is for the Ustad. فَإِنْ مِتَّ مِتَّ شَهِيدًا If you die in one hadith mentioned, you will die as a shaheed. You will get the sawab of the shaheed. فَإِنْ مِتَّ Another hadith say, فَإِنْ مِتَّ حَجَّةِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِكَ That the malaikas, the angels, will make tawaf of your qabr. كَمَا تَحُجُّ الْبَيْتِ like how they make people make tawaf of the Kaaba. The malaikas will make tawaf of you. So Ustad, the pain is a, a three-way team. And the fourth thing, why? Is that those people who assisted, you know, alims, the madrasas cannot 
but you as the businessman, you as the individual, for the madrasas to run. So you included in this whole thing. In the child's half is becoming, in the ustad, in the, in the parents, the individual who sponsors the madrasa, Allah includes him in all this. So this great gift today, as time is up, this great gift has dawned upon us. We make Mubarak body to the parents, Hafiz Zahir and Sister Safira. And not forgetting our Hafiz Salim, the Ustad. You no, know, Hafiz Saab makes us proud. You now we grow up in this town. Our friends, our families are all in this town. Our first khutbah, our first namaz, our first bayan was in the same masjid. Everything was in this masjid of ours. And Hafiz Saab, he is carrying on the legacy of my respected father. That my father instructed him, you must carry on teaching, and he's still carrying on teaching. So give, Allah Ta'ala give him barakat. You know, years ago, many, many, many years, moons ago, a person planted a seed, and then after he plants that seed, that thing grows, someone takes care of it. That tree grows very hard and sturdy. And after that, the fruits come on the tree. And then the certain people later, 30, 40, 50 years down the line, someone plucks that fruit. So today is the same thing. It is the, our fathers, our grandfathers, our grandfathers, they planted the tree of the love of the Quran. They loved the ulama, they showed the respect to the ulama. Today we are just plucking the fruit. I always remember Hafiz Ab Salim, when we left Hayside Farm, <laughs> when we moved to Dandi, his uh, father came, we were looking for a place, father came, Four Vinden Street, that's our first house here. We stayed there, we went to school there. And his father came to my father, there's a house. You will run it, a madrasa, the students will stay there, and you will stay there. No rental, free of charge. He wasn't a hafiz. He knew kitab, etc. He had no knowledge, he had no Google, etc. Like today, everyone's a hafiz, ali, mufti, allama. But he had love for the alim. Today, that is why his grandchildren all hufas. Why? Grandfather. Today, the same, our Haji Yusuf, may Allah fill his qabr with nur. You know, he had what he learned by my father and his wife, that sister, Auntie Ruksana, well known as Ma. She to learn by my father. But Haji Yusuf, what love for my father. If my father left the house and he heard and he was smoking, throw the smoke, cigarette away. That's the love they had, the adab and respect. And every day he will phone. And for the huffaz and ulama, what love, love they had. I remember my brother, Mama Masula and I, whenever we come from Madrasa, every night in our holidays, we'll sit with Haji Yusuf till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. That's the love he had for the ulama and huffaz. So this family is connected to the Quran. So those, our parents and grandparents who love for the Quran, today we can see the fruit that love the children, the grandchildren. And inshallah, we saw the two great grandchildren too. So today, we make dua for all of them. Mubarak ba to everyone. And all of you have come. Allah Ta'ala instill the love of the Quran in you. All our students too. May you carry on and be flag bearers and take the Quran throughout the world. That must move it throughout the world. And <coughs> not forgetting that all those marhumins who have passed away, our Hafiz Zahir, his father and mother, the dada of the child, Allah fal the qabr nur, the nana, all, uh, and uh, dada, daddy, all those who have passed away, Allah fill them, inshallah, this reward is going to them. They are rejoicing. Allah is placing the crown on their head because of their love for the ulama. So you to instill your life in your heart, the love of the Quran, for love for the Quran, love for the ulama, love for the huffaz, Allah will make rahmat and mercy and prosperity in your life. But don't detach yourself from the Quran. Let me just mention one hadith before I end. That, that hadith which I have recited, Man jama'al Quran, that that person who learns the Quran, Matta'ahullahu bi'aqli hatta yamut, that if you became a hafiz, Allah Ta'ala will prevent you from becoming senai. You won't lose your memory. And why I'm mentioning this is because my respected father, may Allah fill his qabr with nur, one hour before he passes away, I managed to see him with COVID, not even one COVID. The doctor said he got 10 COVID. Pneumonia, etc. I phoned the specialist, can I go? Government gazetted, you know, allowed. Somehow they sneaked me into the hospital. It's a long story that. 
went there by him. So, Papa, you know, the doctor has given up your thing. You got very little time. Can you give us some advice? Full mind. He spoke with me three quarter hour. What that brother is doing? What that sister is doing? What that man is doing? Etc. Etc. You brought my honey. Where's my honey? You know, brought my honey. Where's my uh, kitab? That one kitab I ordered. You brought that kitab. Never got that kitab. So Papa, some advice. What was advice? Never told me that. You know, you must open the safe. The keys are under the etc. Or the money is kept there. That property. You know what he told? Hold on to the Quran. Love what you need. Hold on to the Quran. And when you hold on to that Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will welcome you smiling in Jannah. Allah will welcome you smiling. That was his advice. And what one hour before he passed away. So look at the hadith that if you've got the Quran in your heart, you will never become senile.